Hello YouTube. Today we're gonna um, I'm gonna show how I disassembled a uh, strobe in our flash head. This one happens to be a model 660. Uh, those models are stamped into the base. Newer, better versions usually have the model number on the face. And the reason I'm I'm using this one is that I, I blew it up. Um, I rebuilt the battery pack and as it was charging up, I flashed it a couple times as it was charging up, I think for the third flash, something internally popped and it ceased to function. So I'm going to show you what I did to get this thing apart. Because now this is uh, a donor for the purposes of experimentation. Um, so, when you get your your uh, flash head, first thing you want to do is remove the battery pack, and you do that by pinching the two little knurled things on the side, and the battery pack should just pull out, and there it is. Those are four NICAD rechargeable batteries, um, which are still available today just for the purposes of getting this thing apart and showing you what's inside um, this is what I did and I'm not saying this is a good idea there's all kinds of stuff in there that could potentially do you harm uh, this is purely a demonstration get the battery pack out and you'll see on, and most of these are, are identical um, two screws so you take out the screws they're just little screws like that and take those screws out and there's a, a small plastic cover now, now I've had this one apart half a dozen times and put it back together again so I'm going to be rougher than you would want to be if this was your flash head um, I only put it back together again just for the purposes of this demonstration so you take the screws out there's a plastic cover in there that pops out like that and that covers up some electronic guts in there now be real careful if you decide to dry this at home be real careful where you where you put your fingers in this thing uh, there's a big capacitor down in here the NICADs and there's all kinds of little stuff I'm not an electronics guy so I don't know what this stuff is I only know that I don't want to get electrocuted so having removed the plastic cover and the two screws and incidentally this here uh, is the tube where your ready light is and you would see that there's a little tiny window in the bottom of the battery pack where that would light up when it was ready to flash having done that the face is held on uh, by detents around the inside of the gray cover and through some work and again I've taken this apart a bunch of times so I'm going to be fairly rough with it And you'll see that there's a divot here, a divot here, and a divot here. And there's corresponding tabs. You probably can't see that really. There's a there's a tab there that would fit into that that little detent. Okay. So all of this stuff is also held together. This is all a single unit. The the flash face, this component here, whatever it is, and this switch are all a single piece. So you want to wiggle that thing out a little bit, make sure that switch comes out, it's not held in by anything. Wanna wiggle that out, making sure your fingers are away from any of the secret, mysterious component things. And there you have it. There is all of the guts to your strobinar. You've got your plug for your PC cord your AC cord, all this mystical, magical stuff that in the 60s was cutting edge technology. There's your switch, coil, and I don't think you'll be able to see it from this angle, but down inside here, again, not sticking your fingers down in there or any metal objects that aren't insulated with a plastic handle, down inside here is the capacitor. 
and that's what stores the charge that gives you that burst when you take a picture. Um, now I've heard, I don't know this to be true, but I, I've read uh, that the capacitors, even after a long time, can build up or hold a residual charge, uh, even if they've been unused for perhaps even decades. I don't know. And I don't know how that, that could happen, whether it be some kind of solar radiation, aliens, or the presence of Bigfoot. I don't know, but that's a, that capacitor is big enough where I would not want to get zapped by it if it was holding a charge. So be very careful when you're, when you're trying this. Uh, this was my whole demonstration. I just wanted to show you how to get this thing apart. So, electronics people could look at this and know what they are looking at. I do not. I simply wanted to see how it was put together. Uh, I can see here there's a melted wire. There's probably a resistor that has a nice cook mark in it. Uh, I probably will not try to fix this because I do not know enough about this stuff. And also this this covering here, it's just a thin piece of plastic, will come off and reveal the back side of one of the circuit boards. And that is pretty much the entire thing. Where you go from this is up to you. Uh, I am using this as a as a parts parts machine. Um, if you want to buy one of these on eBay, there there's lots of them out there. Uh, a lot of people will will post them as as rare, and that drives me crazy because in this country, there's just no such thing as rare for anything that was built in the last hundred years. Um, also, they're very often sold as in working condition, works great, you know, whatever. Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, this thing. This Model 660 was probably built in the middle 60s when it was cutting edge technology. That means these batteries and that capacitor are 50 years old. Uh, the capacitor, it might be fine for another 50 years or it might blow up in your hand. It, it's hard to say. I've never actually seen one blow up in anybody's hand. I've never met anyone who had one, any capacitor. Uh, blow up in their hand, uh, but I'm told it's a possibility. The batteries, these batteries are also 50 years old, and while sometimes you get lucky and they're semi serviceable, if you really want to use this thing, um, just assume that they're no good. Make the assumption that the batteries are beyond their service life and that they need to be replaced. Now if I can do this quickly here I'll show you what the battery pack actually looks like. That's a little bit of a trick to get them apart. Okay. There's your battery pack. Okay. This one I thought was going to be pretty good until I got it out and I saw that one bat one cell had leaked. Uh, so I'm going to have to make a new battery pack out of that, and that's going to be a different video. There's a lot of great videos on how to how to um, make new battery packs. Um, I'm going to do one, just not today. I just wanted to share this with you. Um, these are, are really great flashes and when they work they give a huge burst of intense light they're, they're awesome flashes if you like using stuff that's well old <laughs> there's no other way to say it I mean if you like using antique stuff this is a, a great tool uh, and they, when they work they work excellently of course modern flashes can do ten times the work, ten times the features, uh, a fraction of the size, and a fraction of the weight. Uh, you read the, the manual on these, and they're, they're very 
breezy and braggy about how they can do hundreds of flashes uh, in as little as this one I think had a uh, average recharge time of eight seconds I've got a model 7 they were they were lavishly bragging about how I could do a hundred flashes um, in as little as 30 seconds per flash with this enormous battery pack a 510 volt battery pack this is not one of those <clears throat> but that's that's pretty much it I wanted to show you that that's how you get it apart if you're an electronics guy you can probably fix these things the capacitor is down inside there it's also held in place by a ring uh, and I have not yet opened this thing up uh, because I'm probably gonna have to sacrifice the the whole plastic body there's a ring down inside there that holds that capacitor down inside and I would like to be able to replace that capacitor as well as the batteries not on this one but on some of the other ones that I have um, I prefer the 700 series because those all have um, a, a button on the side where you can test the flash without having to having to, to cycle a camera with, with its PC plug in place. Uh, you can just charge it up, press the button, and you know if it's going to work or not. If you're going to buy one of these, don't pay a lot for them. Like I said, there's a lot of them out there. I paid, I think, five or six bucks for this, and it, it, it blew up, and it's, it's no longer serviceable. Um, just for uh, a flash head, by itself, uh, in really good condition, I think ten bucks is a fair price. Uh, you can get them. There's specific charges, chargers that go with specific models uh, that make them a little more valuable if the cords are in good shape. I bought one yesterday at a junk shop. Um, it was a cool old flash. It had its cord with it, but the cord was crumbly. That's going to need to be replaced that just destroys the value right there um, you want to make sure it has its battery tray it's not exactly relevant that the batteries be in it because chances are you're gonna have to replace them anyhow um, these were super duper batteries in their day but as I said they're half a century old just assume that well you can, you can get lucky I've got I've got one flash head that I can get a little bit of a charge into and it'll flash a few times but then it's, it's used up. It can't do it anymore. Um, but there's a lot of these on eBay. They show up in junk stores and tag sales and, and usually by the bunch. Um, all these years later, I'm sure the people at Highland uh, were never anticipating 50 years later that anyone would even care about these flash heads, even though they were built to last a lifetime. I mean, you, you look at this thing and it's, it's really solidly built all the circuitry it's got heavy circuitry in it the the printed circuit boards if you could even call them printed these are more like pressed they're they're built like somebody really cared uh, the components are, are chunky and solid the the flash uh, the actual tube that does the flashing is is looks like hand-blown glass it's not but it looks like it. it's just a, a beautifully made piece of equipment and when they work, they work awesomely. And I look forward to using some of the other ones that I've got once I get the battery packs rebuilt and hopefully the capacitor is changed. So until next time, bye.